Welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church, healing hurts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Pastor John Mark, and I'm so excited that you decided to connect today. Right now, grab something to take notes with as we begin today's message. Love as you are. Seriously. If I step into a church, the whole thing will burn down. Man, we felt that before. But Family Church is still standing. No matter what, we'll love and accept you as you are because God did the same for us. No fit checks, no pressure. We know church can be stressful, especially if it's your first time. We promise you dress just fine for church and we won't make you fake it to fit in you're free to come and lay low for a while while you find your bearings space for your family to grow first of all raising a family takes a lot of work and you're doing great but if you're looking for a loving community to help carry some of the weight we have dedicated space, events, and leaders to help kids of all ages explore faith and grow. New perspectives for life's daily struggles. Does it feel like you're only happy when you escape from real life for a while? We've been there, but we learned that stress and anxiety in daily life don't need to be avoided. They just need to be redeemed, made sense of. Join us to find new hope and fresh perspective for the everyday rhythms of life. A community with people who look like you, and don't. It's hard to belong when no one looks like you. That's why we think our church should look and feel as racially, culturally, and socially diverse as the Hudson Valley, so everyone can feel like they have a place to belong. Make midnight phone call friends. Life can be tough, especially when you feel alone. At Family Church, we're committed to decades with you. Forget fake friends. Build genuine relationships with people who will pick up the phone when you call. Healing from church hurt. Has church burned you in the past? Honestly, same. We know how hard it is to give Christians another chance when healing from church hurt. Here, you can find rest, ask hard questions, and even throw some elbows if you need to. A place to be generous with your talent and energy. We all long to be part of something bigger than ourselves, but we often ski past the passions and talents God has already given us. So we ask, what is your big dream and how can we make it a reality? Because unleashing your purpose for we is always more fulfilling than keeping it for me. Hey, today we're launching our new brand. We released three new worship songs. The worship songs that we sang today are available online. The QR codes are on the screen behind me. You can get the pre-release now. If you go to that website, you can begin to listen to them. They will be available throughout this week on Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube, Amazon, and in the Google Play Store. (laughs) Spread the word. Maybe Elevation will sing it one day, you know, just... Get it out there into the worship world. We had a great time this week getting ready to launch this new stuff. Today we're going to talk about our new brand, talk about our logo, what it means, how we're implementing it, and those cultural statements that we made, that video just now, we're going to go through that. I want to explain everything to you, some of the new language and the feel of what we're doing this year. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we come to the name of Jesus and we thank you for this new year that we are stepping into 2024, give us vision, give us insight, give us direction, give us hope. Lord, today as we get into your word, we pray that you open the eyes of our understanding, enlighten us to your truth, in Jesus' name, amen. So today I want to explore the concepts of branding. What does branding mean? What is a new brand? And of course, I've got to make it a sermon, right? So to fully understand the significance of branding in our lives, We must examine the meaning of what it means to be a Christian and the implications of the identity of corporations, a company brand. Together we'll reflect on what it means to be branded by God's grace, how it should manifest in our lives, and how we can live a compelling testimony of God's love. So let's begin with this. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we become part of a 
remarkable transformation, a transformation that extends beyond mere belief. Christianity should not just be a set of beliefs. It should be a lifestyle that you begin to live. Being a Christian means more than just acknowledging Jesus Christ as the Son of God, our Messiah, our Redeemer, our source of hope, and all those things. It means that we become followers of Christ by living the life that Christ lived. And so we're going to look at this passage of Scripture today. It's the most popular verse in the Bible. Uh, you see that football games, basketball games, football players now have it like under their eye on those little pads, whatever those things are for. Anybody know what those things are for? Sure. It, it just looks cool. But let's take a look. It's John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that what? Right. Whoever believes in him. Say whoever. Right. It was not to a specific a demographic group. Whoever, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And a lot of people just stop with John 3.16, but I think John 3.17 might be even more powerful. And it says this, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. As Christians, we can't forget that part, that Jesus Christ did not come to condemn the world. So why do Christians do it? Come on, somebody. We're launching a new brand today, and this is kind of the, the bite behind it. Jesus Christ did not come to condemn the world. Jesus Christ did not come to set up a political party. He came to redeem the world. He came to bring freedom through hope, and he delivered grace to the world. Christianity means surrendering ourselves to God's will, trusting in his grace, and fully following his teachings. Say, fully follow his teachings. And it can be so easy to become a cafeteria Christian. Cafeteria Christian. You know what a cafeteria Christian is? They pick and choose what they want. You go to the cafeteria line like, ah, I don't want peas. Nobody, I don't want salad. I just want meat. Give me the chicken. Give me the beef. Give me some pork. All the other stuff I'm not going to eat. It didn't, it, it, Christianity didn't call us to be cafeteria Christians. It calls us to fully embrace what the gospel message is to live a life in Christ. To be a Christian involves a personal relationship with Christ marked by love, obedience, and a desire to glorify God in all aspects of our lives. In the corporate world, brands serve as an identifier to convey the values, the reputation, and the promise of a company or a product. No one has to tell you what the swoosh on the side of the sneaker means. If someone has a swoosh on the side of their sneaker, what brand is it? Nike. It doesn't have the name on it. They, didn't, they don't feel the need to put Nike, 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 whatever, right? We don't even know how to say the name. It should be Nike, but it's Nike, right? It, their brand has a name for itself. It has a reputation, right? When it comes to corporate branding, Apple doesn't sell you a product. Apple sells you a lifestyle. Apple comes along and they say, we want to make a device that gets rid of having a camera on this side and a camcorder on this side and a cell phone with a cord going back to a battery pack. Come on, who had that? Who had that? We want to get rid of the disc man. Who had a disc man? Who had a cassette Walkman? Oh my God, you're old. My son found a cassette one time in my memory box, and he said, Dad, what is this? I had to pray over him. <laughs> now I'm about to be triggered. But hey, who had, who, had, who had a CD binder with sleeves that all your CDs were in? Come on, somebody. You know you're old. You had a CD binder. I was a DJ back in the day. That's how I met my wife. I was DJing, and we had crates 
of discs, and then as you DJ, you had to like sort through it real quick to find what CD. You know, now it's all computerized and all that. Apple comes along and they say, we are going to get rid of the $18 CD. We are going to get rid of the fact that you have to buy a whole album for one song that you like. Now every song is going to be 99 cents. Ticked so many people off. But now in your pocket on your phone, you not only have a phone, you got a camera, you got a video camera, you got a music player, you got the internet, you got a computer, right? All these things. Because Apple's not selling you a product, they're selling you the lifestyle. And then they come along and they say, we're then going to create the cloud. And all of your devices can talk to each other. You don't have to install your contacts. Who had a Rolodex? Oh, my God. Some of y'all didn't know what a Rolodex is. It was everybody's phone numbers on these cards, and you had to sort through in alphabetic order to figure out. Now we can't even remember phone numbers. Hey, Siri, call mom. Wait, hold on a second. I have to make sure it didn't do it. But that's the power of a brand. Apple sells you the brand. A good product establishes trust. It defines expectations and it differentiates itself from others. It becomes a mark of quality, consistency, and a commitment to excellence. And I find in the church world today that there's actually not a lot of churches that are committed to excellence. So it's good enough. And good enough is a really, really bad place to get stuck. And I'm trying to encourage somebody today, I do a lot of leadership coaching and a lot of leadership seminars. Do not get stuck in good enough. Good enough is a dangerous place. Good enough is an enemy to excellence. And I'm not saying that we can't be satisfied. The Bible says be content in all things, and I understand that. But when you're putting effort forth to do something, your heart should be to do it with excellence. The Bible says that as Christians, everything that we do in all things, do it as unto the Lord. And as we do things unto the Lord, it should not be done good enough. It should be done with excellence. That's what these high-level companies, brands, represent, a level of excellence. Just as a, a brand carries implications for a company, being branded as a Christian has profound implications for us as followers of Christ. Let me tell you, putting a fish sticker on your bumper doesn't make you a Christian. Wearing a Christian t-shirt doesn't make you a Christian, right? Coming to church doesn't make you a Christian. Following Christ makes you a Christian. But I think there's a lot of people who have the title Christian who haven't actually stepped into being a Christ follower. And that's a dangerous place to get stuck. Back in the day... I used to own Harleys. I was a Harley rider, and we would do these trips. Any Harley owners in the house? Two, three. So there's Har- when it, in the biker world, there's Harley owners, and then there's everybody else. Right? It just is. It's like a cult. But part of being a Harley owner is that when you go on these long trips, like we, we drove from here to, to South Dakota to a place called Sturgis for big bike rides. We've done Myrtle Beach. We've done Florida. As you're going across the country, one of the things Harley riders do is they stop in each city and they buy a t-shirt from that Harley dealership, right? So when it came time for me to get rid of my bike, guess what I had to do with the 100 t-shirts I had? You know, most of you be like, what? You just keep it. You just keep wearing them. Nope. In the Harley world, you got to get rid of them. You got to give them away. You got to give them away. Because for me to wear a Harley t-shirt and not own a Harley makes me a poser. It does. It makes you a poser. Makes you a poser. Like wearing a Harley t-shirt and you own a Suzuki. <laughs> you're a poser. Now, and there's nobody in here like this. But I think there's some Christians who wear the Christian label, but they're actually a poser. They're actually a poser. They haven't committed to the lifestyle. They haven't committed to turning their life fully over to Christ. And how can we know this? How can we know this? The Bible says this. They will know that you are my disciples 
by your love. By your love. And if I had to put a scale, a grade, on the church in America, I would say that it lacks a lot of love. That if I had to put a grade on a lot of churches in America, I would say that I can find nastiness. I can find a lot of judgment. I can find a lot of, well, you've got to behave a certain way before you can belong in our church. And that's not what Christ did. That's not what Christ gave his life for. There's a story in the Bible where Jesus is teaching and there's all these kids and they want to come up to Jesus. And his disciples are like, no, shut up and sit down. Be quiet. Here's a candy. And Jesus said to his disciples what? Suffer not the little children to come unto me. So let's just change that story a little bit and understand the depth of what Jesus was saying. He wasn't just talking about kids. That was the context for that moment. Jesus is actually saying, suffer not or do not stop anyone from coming to me. Stop, get rid of the other stumbling blocks. Get rid of all your other preconceived ideas. Let people come to me. Because that's where real life change happens. Real life change happens when you meet a real God who really cares for your needs. The Bible says this, that it is the goodness of God that leads man to repentance. It is not the condemnation of God. It is not the conviction of God. It is the goodness of God that leads man to repentance. That's the truth of the gospel. So how should we respond? Matthew 5.14 says this, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. So they don't go light a candle. When the power goes out, you go light a candle and say, I got a great idea, guys. Let's cover it. No, you lit the light for a reason so that it would shine. So you don't light a, a candle and then put a bowl under. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So when the world or unbelievers see how good you are, how excellent you are, how joy-filled you are, how much peace you have, it actually brings glory to God. But when the church is nasty, and the church is bitter, and the church is condemning, and the church wants to stand on the street corner and say, you're going to hell, that doesn't lead people to the goodness of God. Right? The Bible says, there is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out all fear because fear has to do with punishment. Come on, somebody. We got to read the Bible in light of grace. We got to read the scripture in light of grace. What did Jesus Christ do for us on God's behalf? So we have eight brand promises that we want to launch today. You saw the video, but I want to go through them. What are we promising? What are we bringing about with this new brand? And I'm just going to tell you how this came about. I took over the church in 2017 as the lead pastor. And at that time, my dad retired, and he turned it over to my sister and I. We were going to be co-leaders of the church. And so we went on a trip together, and we sat down, and we wrote uh, a new vision statement, and we wrote some uh, new designs and some new values, and we kind of we built it together, me and my sister. A couple years ago, her and her husband felt led to move to Tennessee and, and do a new work over there. And so... I was kind of like now trying to run this thing that was kind of like half running, right? It was half my sister's vision, half my vision, and I was kind of like out of square. Almost like if you're driving in a car and it's pulling to the right, and you always fight it to stay straight. That's kind of how, how it felt like leading the church with something that wasn't fully my vision. So we sat down and we said, okay, what's the language What's the culture? Who's our target, targeted audience? How are we going to go about building this in a way that I feel God's leading me? And we wrote these eight brand promises. And the first one is this. Loved as you are, seriously. Now, a lot of people say that. I love you just the way you are. But, and the moment you throw your big butt in there, oh, that didn't come out the right way. The moment you throw the butt in there, it negates the rest of everything you're about to say. 
loved as you are, seriously. If I step into church, the whole thing will burn down. Well, thank God we have insurance, right? Man, we felt that before. But family church is still standing. There's a lot of people here who, who've come in the doors who thought the same thing and it's still here. No matter what, you'll, we'll love you and accept you as you are. Why? Because that's what Christ did for us. That's what Christ did for us. Hello, everybody. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He died for us 2,000 years ago. He didn't die for you after you got well. He pre-gave the gift. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's how he accepted us. That's how he called us. And then he comes into our lives and says, but I have better for you. I have new places for you to grow, new places for you to go. And he begins to do that work on the inside of us. Brand promise number two, a community with people who look like you and don't. Thank God you're all not this good looking. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I, I, I do a lot of work uh, down south at, at churches. And sometimes while I'm there, I'll hang out for the weekend service. And, uh, like, the service is all white. Like, all white people. And I feel out of place. And I'll say things like, where are my people? And, like, but you're white. I'm white, but I'm not. I don't identify as a white man. <laughs> all right, that's a whole nother story. That's a whole nother story. I preach... I preached one time in a church in New Jersey, and this family came up to me, this African-American family came up to me after the service, and they go, it was in like an all-white church, it's like one black family. And they come up to me, they go, Pastor, we got to say, thank you for preaching to us today. I was like, you know, the pastor hired, of course, you know, I, I preach to everybody. No, 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 thank you for preaching to us. <laughs> Never had that happen to me before. But if I go somewhere and it's all white people, I feel out of place. I feel awkward, right? Like, I love the fact that we don't all look alike. I love the fact that we can celebrate each other's culture. We can celebrate our heritage. I love that. Listen, man, I was raised on, like, baked chicken and potatoes. When I married a Puerto Rican, I found... I found something called rice. And it can be white and it can be orange. Whoa, I put on 30 pounds. It's crazy. It's hard to belong when no one looks like you. That's why we think our church should be as, as feel as racially and culturally and socially diverse as the Hudson Valley is. So everyone can feel like they have a place to belong. Listen, let's just look at this. Let's just understand this. When we get to heaven, there's not going to be segregation. There's not going to be the Italians and the Irish. Come on, somebody. When we get to heaven, we're going to have these glorified bodies. And guess what we all are? Children of God. Amen. Children of God. So... Let's celebrate our cultures. Let's celebrate our heritage now in this life while we can because it ain't going to be that way in eternity. Just a heads up, just throwing it out there. Okay, love you. Space for your family to grow. First of all, raising kids takes a lot of work. A lot. And hear me clear when I say this, you're doing great. You're doing great. Dads, stop being so tough on yourselves. You're doing great. You're providing for your family. Kids may not understand it at the moment, but one day they will. They, one day they will understand how hard you're, you're doing great. But if you're looking for a loving community to help carry some of that weight, we have a dedicated space. We have dedicated events and leaders to help kids of all ages explore faith and grow spiritually. I got to be honest, this next one I didn't write because I don't even understand it. I had to get out the... Uh, what do you call that, like the, the new modern dictionary to figure out what this was. But it says this, no fit checks, no pressure. Who knows what that means, no fit checks. You're probably under 40, aren't you? <laughs> it means no outfit checks, right, no outfit checks. You don't have to wear a certain designer clothing to fit in the church. 
We know church can be stressful, especially if it's your first time. We promise you dress just fine for church, and we won't make you fake it until you fit in. You're free to come as you are, lay low for a while, and find your bearings. Here's our next hope, is that you would find, make midnight phone call friends. That you would find midnight phone call friends. You're going through something in your life, you could pick up the phone, and you have a friend that you can call. We, we really, really desire to build community, to build friendships, to build a network. Life can be tough, especially when you feel alone. At Family Church, we're committed to decades with you. Forget fake friendships, build genuine relationships with people who will pick up the phone when you call. New perspectives for life's daily struggles. Does it feel like you're only happy when you escape from the real life for a while? We've been there, but we've learned that stress and anxiety in daily life don't need to be avoided. They need to be redeemed. That's so good. The Bible talks about redeeming the time. Redeeming the time. So here, here's this. You don't need to avoid your past hurts. We need to address them head on. We need to address past hurts head on. And then find healing from it. That's the redeeming of it. And then the next part of that, right, you have this hurt from your past. How can you help heal and restore someone else who's experiencing the same pain that you've been through in your life? That's how we redeem it. Make sense of it. Join us to find new hope and fresh perspectives for the everyday rhythms of life. We have a counseling center here that if you need therapy, you need counseling, you can call the church off so you can get them into counseling. We also have Thursday night Celebrate Recovery. If you need a small group to help you through some of the situation. We all need Celebrate Recovery. Hello, somebody. If you've ever been raised by parents, you need help. A place to be generous with your talent and energy. We all long to be part of something bigger than ourselves, but we often skip past the passions and talent that God has given to us. So we ask, what's your big dream, and how can we help make it a reality? Because unleashing your purpose for we, globally, is always more fulfilling than keeping it for me. And listen, I know that we launched three songs today, and it looks like, uh, like our band and our singers are doing a great job, but we need some more singers, we need some more band members. So step into that role, like step out, be part of what we're doing here if you have that talent. And this next one I wrote, and it's not easy to say, but I need to discuss it. Healing from church hurt. Healing from church hurt. Has church burned you in the past? Honestly, same. We know how hard it is to give Christians another chance when healing from church hurt. Here, you can find rest, ask hard questions, and even throw some elbows if you need to. Here's what I need to say to you. Not only have I experienced church hurt, I have caused church hurt. I have hurt people in the past with my leadership, with decisions that I made, changing programs, adding programs, firing people, hiring people, de dealing with ministry with the tools that I had at the time. But here's the grace of God and the thing that I love about him is that we learn new things as we grow. We learn how not to do things, that some things that we may have learned or things that we've done in the past were wrong. And I stand here today and say, if I've hurt you, if you're in the room or you're watching online and I've done something in my leadership that has hurt you, I've made decisions that were wrong, I sincerely stand today in all humility and apologize. I am sorry for, for dealing with the church and leading the way that I did when I did. Uh, I'm not the same person today. I've grown, I've repented, I've worked through my past, I've worked through my pains, and I hope moving forward that we can all grow together, we can mature together, we can grow from grace to grace and glory to glory, and we can build something great in the kingdom of God that transforms the Hudson Valley, amen? So I wanna talk today about this logo. We got rid of the blue dot with the C around it. People would always ask me what it meant. It had absolutely no meaning. I was on a time crunch. I needed to make something. I went on Adobe Illustrator and I made it. Seriously, true story. That's what it was. And then I was watching like uh, one of those like superhero shows and one of the main characters, his logo was like almost the exact same thing and I was like mortified. 
So, so we came up with these three geometric blocks. You say, well, there's nothing flashy about that. Well, no, it's not really the point. And there's nothing flashy about a swoosh, right? It just is. It, 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 what, what's the depth? What's the meaning? And to us, the very first thing that this means is building strong families. The building blocks of strong families. Having church services that facilitate the needs for all of our family members at one time. This also fulfills the last statement in our vision statement, developing leaders. Developing leaders. These blocks are stacked in an upward to the right movement. It's a growing motion. We're staggering and building things up as we grow. The three blocks also represent the Trinity, which we believe in. We believe in Trinitarianism or, or the Trinity of God, right? Three in one person. Uh, and, and it's growing and moving uh, in the right direction. We want to say this church is only as strong as its parts and the spiritual health of its members. I took some time uh, last month. I got away and I was praying. I said, Lord, I need a word for this year. Like, where are we going with this? And you got to understand my background. I was raised Pentecostal charismatic, holy rollers, right? Like, if people didn't fall down on the ground at the service, the Holy Spirit didn't show up. And, 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 I, and, and I'm not not Holy Ghost. Like, trust me when I tell you I'm Holy Ghost to the bone. I pray in tongues every single day. But signs and wonders and miracles do not demand any faith. It's the evidence. There's no faith when a miracle happens because the miracle happened. And we all, oh, oh my God, did you see what just happened? And it's so funny because the Bible says that miracles are for the unbelievers, not the believers. Yet in church, we get amazed when we see a miracle happen. It, it, it shouldn't be something that we're amazed by. I believe the greatest gift to the body of Christ, the greatest miracle today is salvation. When someone goes from spiritual death to spiritual life in an instant, it's the greatest miracle, the work of the Holy Spirit today. But I was challenged to go to the Word of God to see... What was Jesus' ministry? How did he do what he did? And this is what the Bible says. Jesus went to every town and village teaching, then preaching, then healing. He didn't heal, then teach. He didn't perform a miracle and then preach. Why? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing. Faith doesn't come by witnessing a miracle. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. So I said, Lord, what do, you want, what do you want to say this year? And here's what I felt. I felt that family church was going to experience the outpour of heaven in 2024. The outpour of 2024. But how was that going to come? And, and, you know, like my Pentecostal roots is like, yeah, blinded eyes open. We're going to see miracles. We see limbs grow and cavities filled with gold. And the, <laughs> true that's in there he said you're going to preach more word you're going to teach more bible you're going to launch Wednesday night bible studies and as I outpour the word of God as the word of God flows from heaven to earth teaching preaching healing but it's got to have the it's got to have the the base of faith through the word of God I believe this year as we launch Wednesday night bible studies we're also launching a full-fledged year-long discipleship program. We're launching mentor programs and internships. We've got a lot of these things going. This outpour of the word of God is going to bring about a move of the spirit that this generation has not seen before. Amen? As Christians, we carry the brand of grace that is stamped upon our hearts. And let me encourage you. If God has given you his grace then extend it to others. Extend it to others. Extend God's grace to others. We've got to stop the condemnation. We've got to stop the judgment. People are not drawn to God based upon your judgment. They're drawn to God because his unfailing love towards them. Extend grace. God's unconditional love and mercy are imprinted in our lives and they should be shaping our identity. We should no longer define ourselves by the world's standards, 
but by who we are in Christ. And who is that? We are redeemed, we are forgiven, and we are eternally loved. We are redeemed, we are forgiven, and we are eternally loved. And if you are forgiven, then forgive. Forgive. The Bible says bitterness in your life is as, as rottenness as to the bone. And when you do a search on that and study that out, it literally means this, that bitterness or unforgiveness is cancerous to your body. Cancerous to your body, unforgiveness. Come on. I bet some people could get healed today just by forgiving someone, something you've been holding a grudge for years and years and years. Today's the day, let it go. Identify with Christ. We should be manifesting Christ-like character. Our actions and attitudes should reflect the character of Christ. We should demonstrate genuine love, humility, forgiveness, compassion, and grace towards others. And how do we know that's happening? Because the fruit of the Spirit will be manifest. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And we probably struggled with self-control last week at dinner, didn't we? Family church should also be a beacon of hope. As branded Christians, we are called to extend hope to a broken world by sharing faith in the gospel, serving the needy, advocating for justice, and being agents of reconciliation. We become the living manifestation of God's love and grace when we do these things, standing up for what's right. Our lives should become a guiding light directing others to the ultimate source of hope who is Jesus Christ. Check this out. In the Old Testament, Isaiah 58, verse 10, it says this. And if you spend yourselves in behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness and your night will become like the noonday. You know what this means? This means when you help others, it actually helps you. When you're there for someone in need, it actually fuels you. It actually restores you. It brings joy to you when you were able to help somebody else. Being branded by grace as a Christian carries an immense responsibility. A responsibility to live lives that honor and bear witness to the transforming work of Christ in us. Hey, listen, we're not always going to get things right. That's the only thing like Christ that we're not. Right? He was perfect in all things. We're not always going to get things right. But how can we help get better? By identifying when we mess up. Identifying when we miss it, when we miss the mark. And that's the idea of repentance. Right? I was wrong in this. I had this incorrect. Man, I'm in college again, right, studying some new theology ideas and stuff. And I'm like, man, maybe I wasn't fully right with some of the stuff that I learned 20 years ago in college. Maybe I was in a specific type of school that saw things a specific way, and maybe that's not what it was all about. And so we revisit these things and we restudy them to try to get it right. That's why Paul tells Timothy to, to the pastor, study to show yourself approved unto God. Study it out, research it, find out what it's saying. So in all things in our lives, why am I doing what I'm doing? What's my motivation behind it? Maybe the way I spoke to my kids today wasn't right. I can be better. Right? We can grow together. Amen? Just as a brand identifies a company's commitment to its values and promises, we should be distinguished in our unwavering dedication to Christ's teachings and our love for one another. I'm telling you right now, we can transform the church world if we just practice what we preach. If we just loved, if we stop, stop making things about politics, stop making things about who's identifying as what in the world, come on, if we just loved like Christ loved, I'm telling you, you'd be so much happier. If you stopped watching CNN and Fox News, you'd be happier. That's as deep as I'm going. Right, because for some reason this stuff breeds anger and it breeds resentment. Jeez, that wasn't what Jesus did. 
Anytime he was put in a position where like, well, you need to tell us, Jesus would be like, hey, in my kingdom, this is what we do. As a believer in Christ, this is what I do. I can't control the world. Listen, the punishment of the world is hell. We're never going to get the world to have Christian values. But I can hold Christian values. And I can be a light unto the world. And when people see that, it will draw them to Christ. Jesus said this. He said, if I be lifted up, I would draw all men unto me. So how do I lift them up? By living out Christ's likeness. Being a reflection of his glory. A reflection of his love. We have this new tagline. I'm closing with this. We have this new, new tagline. Real life change. So family church, real life change, no religious bull. And I know it's a bold statement. It's offensive for some people. And I get that. But I'm tired of Christian hypocrisy. I'm tired of Christian hypocrisy. Where we, where we stand in pulpits and we preach certain messages, but we're the cafeteria Christians. We want to pick on certain things, but we can also be 500 pounds overweight as pastors. Gluttony's in the Bible, buddy. Hello, somebody. And I'm not trying to be judgment, judgmental. I'm just saying you want to judge the same measure, judgment's going to come back on you. Right? Come on. If we just stand up and teach God's love, look at the word of God through the lenses of grace, and then we extend it to our neighbors. It's going to snow soon, just so you know. Maybe not until February, but it's going to snow at some point. Could you help your neighbors do their sidewalk, even though you hated doing your own sidewalk? We, those are things we can do. We can help our neighbors. Stop arguing about their dog coming onto your yard. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift this sister up before you. It's my challenge. Real life change, no religious bull. I'm not saying religion is bull. I'm saying hypocrisy is. The pharisaical spirit is going to drive people away from God and church. The Pharisees, they, they thought they looked good on the outside, the Bible says, but the inside that they were nasty and dirty and unclean. So you wash the outside of the bowl, but the inside's dirty. We don't need that. We don't need to put the right outfits on and have the right Bible and, and put this facade on, yet we're broken inside. We need to come to the cross as we are and let the Holy Spirit do his perfect work in our lives as we grow together and as we work out our own salvation with the fear and trembling of the word of God. Amen. Father, we come to the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray today it is not my heart, God, to, to launch a new brand and a new message that would be offensive. But Lord, I think the only ones that would be offended by it would be the ones that have religious hypocrisy in their life. Lord, I pray that we can extend the love of God and the grace of God to everybody around us. Let our light so shine in a way that it reflects your glory and your honor. Lord, we pray that your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We look forward to the outpour of 24. We look forward to the word that you want to present to us, that we can grow spiritually in our faith. And as we grow in faith, and as that faith grows inside of us, God, we will see the demonstration of the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. I pray for open doors of opportunity to share our faith, to win the lost, to advance the kingdom. Lord, give us boldness. Give us courage. We dedicate 2024 to you. We forget what's behind and we look towards the mark for the prize of the high call. We keep our eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. We thank you for today. Lord, everyone who came in here today, they're blessed. They're blessed coming in. They'll be blessed going out. Everything they set their hands to will prosper and be successful in Jesus' name. Amen. Love ya. My name is Pastor John Mark, and I'm so glad we were able to connect together today. If this impacted you in any way, I need you to do a few things for me. I need you to like and subscribe to this channel and head over to FamilyChurchNY.com to take your next steps.